In Switzerland, you will find historic towns, raging rivers, snow-capped mountains, scenic lakes, and you can easily get all around this lovely country with efficient travels on the excellent Swiss train network. You'll see the very best of Switzerland in this practical travel guide filled with some of Europe's most beautiful scenery, including wild, majestic landscapes and charming historic cities, balancing urban adventures with natural wonders. This tour could easily be done in two weeks or stretch it out to a more leisurely three weeks with a carefully planned itinerary as we show you in this video guide presenting the best of Switzerland. We'll focus on the magnificent Alps mountains covered in glaciers easily reached by cable car and mountain trains offering breathtaking vistas in all directions, especially the three main groups of mountains in the region of Titlis, the Jungfrau, and Matterhorn. You'll be immersed in that natural beauty with a chance to do some walking on easy mountain trails and time for fun in town. Coming up, you'll see the great cities including Lucerne, Interlaken with Jungfrau and Schilthorn, Bern, Zermatt, Locarno, Lugano, and Zurich. You'll learn how to navigate their pedestrian lanes while finding historic monuments, little shops, good restaurants, and hotels. Switzerland is a land of many scenic lakes, so we will enjoy numerous boat rides that give you a different perspective and provide a relaxing, useful way to reach picturesque waterfront villages. We have created a series of longer movies about each of these Swiss destinations, which you can find in our collection. They go into great detail with many more scenes, but in this movie we have managed to combine and summarize the adventure in a convenient package presenting the major highlights. Perhaps later you can enjoy the entire video series for the ultimate Swiss experience. It's like a guidebook, but with pictures that move and you don't have to do any reading. Get started in Lucerne, the perfect place for the ideal first impression of Switzerland. Continuing after a few days to Interlaken where you can get up into the mountains, a day trip over to Bern, and then a ride down to the southern portion to Zermatt, surrounded by spectacular peaks, riding across the tip of Italy into Locarno in southern Switzerland. From there, continue north on another scenic train ride to Zurich, completing the perfect trip. Lucerne, Switzerland is one of the world's most charming towns, set on a picturesque lake surrounded by majestic mountains. They truly have it all. Famous for its well-preserved old town, consisting of many blocks of very old buildings, richly decorated with painted murals showing village life and hunting scenes from the olden days, making this like an outdoor art gallery. And all of this is set on a beautiful waterfront along the shores of Lake Lucerne and the River Royce. The heart of the old town is a pedestrian zone with wooden bridges and cobblestone lanes and lined with shops and banners and really a festive, wonderful place. The River Royce is very scenic, flowing right through the middle of town. Lots of swans and walkways on both sides. There's a lovely promenade along the River Royce that's lined with cafes, restaurants, and bars. It seems like a big outdoor block party. And you can get some good food and delicious beer in a lovely outdoor setting. Alongside the River Cafe Terrace, you've also got a whole stretch of covered arcades where the party continues with more restaurants and bars. You're going to really enjoy exploring the small lanes and plazas in Lucerne. While the main shopping lanes will attract most of your attention, be sure to have a look at the little side lanes as well. They can be a quiet respite from the busier shopping streets, and there's usually some outdoor cafe tables and little unique boutiques for you to explore. The town has lots of souvenir shops, but here maybe something like an antique shop. And there's a bit of a nightclub center on a couple of these side lanes where the action goes late into the night. You can easily find a map of Lucerne, perhaps at your hotel or certainly online. But you don't need to study it too closely because you can't get lost in this small place. The old town is surrounded on one side by the river and lake, and on the other by a hillside 
an ancient fortified wall which you can climb. And up on the hill you see the wall of town. Now you can walk up to the wall and you can climb the towers. And from there you have a nice view looking back down on the town. It's really quite nice. Feel free to just wander so you can rearrange the schedules and itinerary selected here in any way that suits your personal preference. This is a small town, so you don't have to be too concerned about constructing any sort of efficient sequence of events. And this area is filled with interesting shops and restaurants and ancient buildings. The steep gabled roofs covered with strong wooden shingles to ward off the winter snow complete this picturesque scenario. The automobiles are just not allowed into this large historic zone, so you can wander the cobble lanes without fear of getting run over. You'll discover several other peaceful small plazas in the middle of the old town where cobblestone pedestrian lanes come together and form a charming open area, ringed by ancient buildings and sidewalk cafes, often with a fountain in the middle. A good example here is at Weinmarkt. It's the Wine Market Square, and there's a beautiful painting on the wall illustrating the Last Supper with old buildings around, and that fountain is one of several hundred fountains in the town that offer clean drinking water. There are small independent shops and a few small department stores make this prime retail section of town cobblestone lanes for pedestrians winding past ancient buildings that have the most modern shops inside with everything spotlessly clean and well organized. Switzerland is the land of efficiency and charm. You'll also want to get out of town to see the nearby attractions. We're taking you up to the mountains and lakes near Lucerne, Switzerland, including Mount Titlis, Mount Rigi, Pilatus and Bergenstock, along with scenic boat rides, cable cars, rack railroads, and hiking trails. We're starting with a trip up to Mount Titlis, one of the most scenic and popular destinations in Switzerland, high in the Alps. And the best way to get there is simply take the train. It's a lovely train ride from Lucerne to Engelberg, about one hour, very scenic. And then you change from the train to a cable car at Engelberg, and you ride up Mount Titlis. It's about 10,000 feet high. On a good day, you can see all the way to the Jungfrau, which is in the middle of the Swiss Alps. We're here at the top of Mount Titlis, and it's a spectacular clear day today. You can see right into the heart of the Swiss Alps. It's called the Bernese Oberland in this section, and it's very much the center of the country. They call it a Mastiff and the mountains we're looking at are mostly 12,000 feet high and then there's also this terrace right over here where you can sit, you can have uh, uh, coffee, you can have snacks over there. One of the most exciting attractions is called the Titlis Cliff Walk. It's a pedestrian suspension bridge that gives you these dramatic views looking all around and even straight down 500 meters beneath your feet. And we stay up here for about one hour. It's enough to walk around, have a look, take our pictures, and then we continue back down the way we came up. Catch the train and be back in Lucerne by about two o'clock. And that gives you time to either relax in town for the rest of the day or head out for another excursion. There are three more mountains to see in the vicinity of Lucerne in this afternoon. You could do one of them by taking a boat across the lake and then go up to Mount Rigi. The next day you could visit Bergenstock and Pilatus. You'll find these excursions linked together with the scenic boat rides provide some of the most rewarding experiences in your visit to Lucerne. The fleet has a couple of dozen ships, but try and select one of the historic side paddlers for the best journey. There are a wide variety of routes you can pick from, ranging from a one-hour round trip to a full-day excursion. You could do a two-hour round trip from Lucerne out to the lakefront village of Vegas, or extend that with a trip up the mountain to Rigi. It makes a great excursion. And go up the mountain to Rigi by cable car. This was a beautiful cable car ride up, 
Halfway, in this case, we are changing from the cable car to the rack railway, and this is going to get more spectacular every minute. It's the month of May, and so there is still quite a bit of snow up here on the slopes of Riggi. At the top, you can wander around, enjoy the views, then take a rack railway back down to Vitznau and finally catch the next boat. Get some rest tonight because tomorrow morning we have another ambitious itinerary for you on a day trip. The main goal is Mount Pilatus, starting with boat ride to Burgenstock, then a funicular ride up the hill for some hiking through the forest. It's a small mountain plateau with a dramatic cliff-hugging walking trail. This is a level path with sweeping views across the lake and a series of short hiking trails continues through the forest, so it's very pleasant walking in the shade of the tall trees of the forest. Another boat ride over to Pilatus, up a steep rack railway to the mountaintop, then cable car ride back to Lucerne and the city bus back into town. Arriving at the top of Mount Pilatus on this funky little funicular. Get some beautiful views along the way, and soon we're up in the snow fields. Great place to snap some more pictures, shoot some more video, vistas and viewpoints in all directions. And at the top, surprise, surprise, there's actually a hotel up here. And they have a restaurant, there's several cafes. The Swiss have truly got some great scenery here, and they have civilized their mountaintops. From Lucerne, we'll bring you over to Interlaken on another scenic ride through the Brunig Pass. The train continues along the shores of Lake Brienz into the center of Alpine exploration. The town of Interlaken makes a perfect home base for exploring the beautiful mountains all around the central region of Switzerland. Tourists have been coming to Interlaken and the area since about 1800 when it was first popularized by some romantic painters. And then tourism really increased in the 1890s and early 1900s with the opening of railway service. There are about 100 hotels and guest houses in all price ranges in the city. While Interlaken is attractive with an excellent supply of hotels, shops, restaurants, and a pretty park in the middle, you're not really coming here to see the town. So be sure to spend most of your daylight hours outside the town. The nearby surrounding peaks and valleys are your main reason for being in Interlaken. From Interlaken, the train brings you into Lauterbrunnen Valley, and from there up towards Grindelwald and around up the mountain, heading to the Jungfrau. High up in the mountains of Switzerland, you can explore the snow-covered Jungfrau and Schildhorn, two of the Alps' most scenic peaks. They're located on either side of Lauterbrunnen Valley near Interlaken. The Swiss have made it easy for you to travel two miles high and reach these mountaintops with a minimum of effort, thanks to their network of trains, rack rail, and cable cars that do the work for you. In two perfect days, you can investigate both of these majestic alpine summits with time left over for several side trips, going inside a waterfall, then through a glacier gulch, and walking lovely trails to small villages, all with scenic vistas you will never forget. You can easily get from your breakfast table to the highest peak in two hours of comfortable travel. Head by train up to the Jungfrau, changing trains at Grindelwald Village and Kleinescheidig, arriving early up top. Plan to spend about two hours on the Jungfrau, enjoying the views, frolicking in the snow, and experiencing the many exhibits on offer at the summit. They've created some entertaining spaces for movies, sparkling rooms, ice tunnels, restaurants, and shopping, of course. We have another big day planned for you on the other side of Lauterbrunnen Valley, going up, down, around, and inside some mountains. You are going to experience some of the finest scenery in the Swiss Alps as we take you along on a trip to the top of the Schilthorn at the back of Lauterbrunnen Valley. And along the way, we're going to see the villages of Muren and Gimmelwald, and we'll take you into the fantastic Trummelback Falls. 
We're at the top of the Schilthorn, which is a fantastic viewpoint for looking at the heart of the Swiss Alps. It's the Bernese Oberland, and you've got the Monk, the Eiger, and the world-famous Jungfrau Mountain. It's really a glorious view, and it's a 360-degree panorama up here at the Schilthorn. It's a must when you come to Switzerland. Many people consider the view from the Schilthorn even more spectacular than the view from the Jungfrau. The Swiss engineers have done it again with superb facilities at the Observation Center, including a rotating restaurant and escalators to bring you to the different levels, all run by solar power. On a clear day like this, you've got the sunny highlights and the dramatic clouds in the background. Beautiful peaks and valleys all covered in snow. A large outdoor terrace provides an excellent vantage to look back across the valley at those three world famous peaks, the Jungfrau, Monk, and Eiger, whose complete forms can be seen better from this vantage than from close up. There's a convenient diagram points out how you're surrounded by other peaks that are as much as 4,000 meters high. That's about 13,000 feet. We're up at about 3,000 meters above sea level here at the Schilthorn. That's about 10,000 feet. All year round, they have snow, they have a glacier. After an hour at the top, you've probably seen enough, unless you're staying for a meal. So head down in the next cable car, back down to Murren. Together, it's the longest cable car run in Europe. Four different cable car rides are needed to get down from an elevation of 9,748 feet on top down to 2,844 feet in the valley bottom. On your way down, you can walk part of the way on a most enjoyable hike. Don't take the cable car from Murren to Gimmelwald, but instead walk it. It's a beautiful half hour downhill stroll and you get some amazing vistas of the valley, You'll see other hikers along the way and the rustic cabins of Gimmelwald. So by all means, consider walking that easy downhill slope from Murren to Gimmelwald, and there you can pick up on the cable car once again. In hindsight, at the end of our two-week trip through Switzerland, many of our travelers felt that this walk was the nicest of all. It's really one of the easiest alpine strolls with the mild, downhill slope that gently pulls you along, fueled by sights so pretty it will be an effortless glide. The views from the lowest stage of this cable car journey are so fine that they alone would make the day worthwhile. Looking out the length of the Lauterbrunnen Valley and to various waterfalls and that dramatic rock cliff a few feet from the gondola. Once you have reached the valley bottom, there is a very convenient public bus that you can catch from Steckelberg. The valley has 72 waterfalls, but Trummelback is by far the most spectacular. It's really the only one that you can walk up, and you actually go up inside the mountain to view the waterfall. It's the most amazing waterfall in the Alps that you'll ever see. The Swiss engineers have built elevators, staircases, and walkways, and viewing platforms to give you this view of this most unusual waterfall. Even after you ride the elevator, you've got more than 200 steps to get to the top. A few level walkways have been carved into the crevasse to make it easier for you to get around, but nearly all of this is natural rock formations. And they built staircase tunnels to get you up higher. There are about a dozen major drops in this waterfall. So it's like looking at 10 or 12 waterfalls in one. And always there's the amazing carved and sculptured rock cliff face. This booming water pounding through. Over millennia, this huge barrage of water had carved out a, a narrow vertical twisted canyon into the rock face of the cliff. And well, the engineers thought this is an interesting opportunity to let people get up in there and be inside the waterfall itself. If you've timed it right, the bus arrives and it'll pick you up and bring you back to the town of Lauterbrunnen, which is only about a 10 minute bus ride from this point. 
Arriving at the Lauterbrunnen Rail Station, you can catch the final leg of your day's adventure, which is another scenic ride back to Interlaken, which only takes about 20 minutes. So your time in town is mostly for eating and sleeping, doing a little shopping in order to gear up for those excursions into the mountains. You don't come to this area just to see Interlaken, but instead the town has great value as a practical tourist center with fine support services, excellent rail and boat connections, and a compactness that makes for easy walking anywhere in town. One of the most rewarding excursions you can take from Interlaken by train is a short journey over to the capital of the country, Bern. It's only 50 minutes away by train. The main street proceeds directly from the front of the train station right through the historic center. This road is remarkable not only for the ancient buildings and arcades that cover both sides, but for the spectacular Renaissance fountains down the middle. The famous clock tower and the arch at the end of the market street is the oldest building in town with an astronomical clock that still works after 500 years. Three fountains decorate the street. The fountain in the center is the Simpsonbrunnen built in 1527 and decorated with a figure of Samson taming the lion. The Zeringerbrunnen fountain at the western end of the street is Burns first figure's top fountain, depicting an armored bear, Burns' heraldic beast. The word burn means bear, and this animal is the symbol and token of the city. At the end of town across the river, they have their famous bear pits. In recent years, the government has greatly expanded this bear habitat to make it really a pleasant place for the bears to live. Now it's become a vast outdoor zoo and the bears seem to be enjoying it. They're having a great time. We happen to be here on an amazing day in which two young bear brothers had been reunited after being apart for nearly a year. Frisky and having fun and remembering each other and so happy to see each other. They had a great time tussling around, wrestling and playing and getting reunited. It's time to get back on the big train and continue another intercity journey, this time heading deep into the southern part of Switzerland to Zermatt. Most famous for the Matterhorn Mountain, you're going to find that Zermatt is a place of incomparable beauty, surrounded by those tall, snow-covered alpine peaks, easily accessible going up by rack railway and cable car and funicular and going down partly by hiking. There are many wonderful walking trails, so easy, especially when you're going downhill. Before heading right up to the hills, you'll want to take a walk around in Zermatt Village. The most unique attraction of Zermatt is the quick access from town to several gigantic mountains. You can walk in a few minutes from the village center to rack rail and cable car stations that will take you into high mountain country surrounded by more tall peaks than anywhere else in Europe. You have probably never seen anything like it. And then you can walk down some of the lower slopes on easy nature hikes through majestic landscapes with snow-covered peaks looming overhead. Then you can relax in the charming village famous for its quaint rustic wooden architecture will take you up the three main mountains around Zermatt town by funicular and cable car and rack rail, and then we'll show you how to walk down the lower slopes on some very easy trails, followed by eating, shopping, and relaxing in the village. Zermatt, Switzerland has more tall mountains around it than any other town in the Alps. One of the most spectacular activities of any visit to Switzerland is a trip up the Gornergrat mountain, high above the village of Zermatt. To reach the top, you take the highest outdoor train in Europe, and you will be rewarded with an amazing mountain panorama all around you. We are taking the Gornergrat Mountain Railroad. This is an narrow gauge rack railroad that's going to take us up past some stunning views of the Matterhorn. That's the signature site of Zermatt. This train is the second highest railroad in Europe, just behind the train that goes up to the Jungfrau. 
and it's actually the highest train that's primarily not inside tunnels. The train station at the top is at 3,090 meters above sea level. You can see 29 peaks that are 4,000 meters or more in height, which is practically every tall mountain in Switzerland from one spot. Well, enough mountain viewing, let's go shopping. The Gornergrat boasts the highest shopping mall in Europe. And they've also got a hotel up here. It's the highest hotel in the Alps. You can buy watches, pocket knives, luggage, a bottle of wine, or some chocolates. And we'll show you how to get down from the Gornergrat. There's a beautiful hiking trail. We are heading down from the top of the Gornergrat mountain above Zermatt. And we decided to take the train part of the way and then walk the rest of the way down into the village at the valley bottom. So we decided to head down towards the bottom and get off at Riffel Alp Station. And then we expect about an hour and a half walk down into the village. The map shows the train route from the top at Gornergrat down to Riffel Alp where we got off. There are two different routes down from the Riffel Alp Station. We went to the left side of the train tracks, or you could go to the right side of the tracks when you get out at that Riffel Alp Station and head down on a slightly more direct route. But either way, it's really quite similar. Of course, you could just stay on the train if you want and ride all the way to the bottom, but it's nice to do some walking. So take advantage of this station at Riffel Alp. In late afternoon, you'll have plenty of time to walk down to Zermatt. It makes an easy family stroll. We found that getting off and hiking from Riffel Alp, as we're showing you here, was pretty much ideal. Then we're going to walk down part of the lower slope for one of the most satisfying hikes in Switzerland. You get the experience of about an hour hiking on a lovely trail, and yet it's quite easy. And the trail will lead you right back into Zermatt Town, right along that main pedestrian lane. We're ready for Wurst, the national dish of the country. And how convenient at this sidewalk stand. It's quick and inexpensive, and we're on our way to explore the village. Or you could sit at an outdoor table and watch the town go by. The pedestrian streets are narrow and lined with shops, restaurants, hotels, and inns near the rail station. Homes and houses are scattered throughout, some perched on the lower edge of the mountains. The main church in town is St. Mauritius, built in the 1920s. But the first historical record of a church here goes back to the year 1285. Watch out for the horse carriages. You could take a ride in one, or if you're staying in a fancy hotel, you might be delivered from the rail station in a horse carriage. Some of the main stores that you'll see here are the shops for Swiss watches. And while you can buy Swiss army knives all over the world, it's very nice to purchase them here in the homeland, the authentic models from Victorinox. You'll find the quality of display is really eye-catching. After all, they want to stop you in your tracks as you're walking by the storefront. About 30 ancient buildings show the traditional style of the original Walser residence. There's barns and grain stores that are up to 500 years old. That's a piece of living history that reveals how the mountain farmers of Zermatt once lived. The preservation of these buildings is of growing importance to the local communities and the Swiss Heritage Society, and fortunately to the owners themselves. These buildings symbolize the customs, the traditions, and farming culture at the highest altitudes in this alpine region. There are just three main streets which run along parallel to the river Mater Vispa, and numerous cross streets, little lanes. In general, anything is at most a 30-minute walk away. And then we're going up another mountain. We're going to Sonega, and we'll take you on another hike down. It's easy to get to the mountain lift. It's in town, although it's not in the center of the village. It's over on the edge, so it might be a 10-minute walk for you, but no problem getting there. Reaching the funicular in a few minutes, we notice out front they have a big map showing the different routes and different locations up on the mountaintop. We'll be riding up this way in the underground funicular and then walking down the mountain. 
This funicular goes up through a tunnel in the mountain. You're never above ground. It's like a subway inside the mountain itself. It was opened in 1980. That only took three minutes and now we're out on the terrace. The sign shows you that from this one point, there are many different trails that you can take. And there's a restaurant up here, of course, and a bar. You could just have a drink, have a meal, or just skip it as we're going to head right out and do some walking. And so we begin our descent. We figure this will take us about an hour and a half. It actually took about two hours, but it's all downhill and really quite easy and scenic. Right away, there's a little lake called Lysi. In the summertime, people go swimming in this lake, but it's a little nippy here in the month of May, so we're just taking a look. This early part of the trail was reached within about 15 minutes, and it was so pleasant, quite level, You've got the rocky outcrops, you've got the hillside coming down with the grassy slopes and a few wildflowers. It's a magnificent forest of larch trees, the typical forest cover of this part of Switzerland. A very hardy and durable wood that's used for construction as well as firewood. Getting into the characteristic zigzag cut of the trail, it's going steeper downhill but still it's been planned so that the slope is very easy for anybody to cover. You do not have to be in any kind of special physical condition to make this hike. It's really quite easy. It's gonna take you an hour and a half to two hours. Don't try and put on the brakes, just go with gravity, go with the flow and let the hill carry you down. With all the beautiful scenery and the lovely trees and the easy walk down, we've almost arrived at the bottom. From this point, the trail is all quite level, especially compared to what we've just come down from up on the mountain. We are in the suburbs of the little village of Zermatt. We're going on a major, major journey to a high mountain peak. We're taking you to the top of the Klein Matterhorn, which has the highest viewing platform in Europe that can be reached by cable car at 3,883 meters high at the top of the Alps with the highest viewpoint and highest restaurant in Europe. It's called Little Matterhorn because it's next to the more famous Matterhorn Mountain that's even higher, 600 meters higher, taking three cable cars changing twice on our route to the top, which takes about 45 minutes altogether. All around you is the biggest collection of tall mountains in the Alps, 38 of them reaching higher than 4,000 meters. And there's three stages of cable cars to get back down into Zermatt. But once again, we're not going to ride the cable car all the way down. You could if you want to, but we've chosen to opt out and take a hike. Several of us looked back on this hike as the favorite moment of the entire tour. And we had a lot of great moments on the tour, as you might have noticed if you've been following all of our Swiss videos but there was just something lovely and ideal about this beautiful walk downhill through the wildflowers with mountains all around us. This close contact with nature combined with the charms of the village make Zermatt the ideal destination. Put it on your bucket list. That's our quick look at Zermatt. We've made a detailed movie about the town and mountains around it you can find in our Swiss collection. We are going to take you on an epic train ride through the Alps from Zermatt down south to Locarno, riding on four different trains during this day's journey to get you there. Into the Ticino, the Italian speaking part of Switzerland. The map shows our route taking three different trains to get from Zermatt to Locarno, and then a fourth train on down to Lugano. Picture waterfront towns on scenic lakes, surrounded by mountains with the charms of Italy and efficiency of Switzerland wrapped in a mild climate. Welcome to the Ticino in southern Switzerland and its two main cities of Locarno and Lugano. This Italian-speaking region in the south of Switzerland will delight you with its Mediterranean atmosphere and Swiss backbone. Here you'll find the best of both worlds romance of Italy and efficiency of Switzerland. The casual, relaxed lifestyle enjoyed by residents will put you in the mood for a tranquil experience, yet with many stimulating activities on offer. 
You could just drop anchor and relax in this unusual place with casual strolls, mild diversions, and long cafe visits. The narrow pedestrian lanes are sprinkled with unique little shops that will lure you in. You have entered a rather surprising part of Switzerland that you might not recognize at first. Flowers everywhere, pastel-colored buildings, historic old towns with arcaded piazzas, mild subtropical climate, not too hot, not too cold, major lakes, snow-capped mountains, and the people speak Italian. But yes, we are still in Switzerland. In many ways, it's a most satisfying and interesting destination that seems to sum up all of Europe in one small corner of the world. A place often overlooked or passed through by visitors looking for Switzerland. Ticino is a bit less crowded than more famous Swiss or Italian hotspots, which makes it all the more attractive. The best of both worlds. There are so many things to see, it could get confusing, but we lay out an effective three-day itinerary that covers the special territory. Day one, enjoy Locarno, the waterfront, the town, the pedestrian lanes, the Piazza Grande. In the afternoon, we'll visit Ascona, the beautiful nearby waterfront village. And day two, take a short train ride down to Lugano, most famous for its historic arcade-covered old town, including a visit to the hillside waterfront village of Gandria. And then at the end of day two, come on back to Locarno for the evening. On day three, we'll continue exploring the pedestrian zone of Locarno, visit the History Museum, take another boat ride. We'll also bring you up into the nearby valleys on a bus trip and do some hiking through the little stone villages. Slow down and have a good look around. You'll be rewarded with rich memories of a place you hardly knew. Now we're coming full circle on our tour of Switzerland, ending up in Zurich, the city where we landed, which we have saved for the grand finale. Zurich is among the world's best cities to live in with one of the highest qualities of life, according to recent studies, so it's also a perfect place to visit. While most people know its reputation as a modern banking center, you'll be surprised to discover the historic charms of its extensive old town, among the largest in Switzerland. We'll show you the best of Old Town and the modern downtown in this episode. You'll find the Old Town to be quite convivial. Lots of sidewalk restaurants and people out strolling. It extends over both sides of the river running right through the middle of the city. And despite the narrow pedestrian lanes, it's easy to get around. You won't get lost. It is delightful to wander in this large pedestrian zone that is filled with enchanting little alleys which lead through an ancient town that was founded during the Middle Ages. With the right strategies, you can see this slightly expensive city without spending a fortune. It's an easy city to cover on foot, which is always the best and cheapest way to see any historic town. As always, our travel movie is entertaining with lots of beautiful sights. It's educational with information about the culture and history and it's a practical guide for you to help you get the most out of your visit. There's many little side lanes to explore and places to just go wandering on your own, but we'll give you a general outline of a best single route to take. This map shows in detail the lanes along Niederdorfstrasse and the route that we'll be taking. If you're exploring on your own, you don't need to follow this exact sequence, but these are the main lanes that you want to try and find. We're standing in the heart of the old town of Zurich now. This is the Niederdorfstrasse, and it's truly one of the great streets in the world. It's a pedestrian lane nearly a mile long, and there are all kinds of characters here. You're going to see an international crowd on the street as well, but it's mostly locals, and there are, of course, a lot of restaurants, sidewalk restaurants and bars, cafes, bakeries, and several hotels here. Dozens of small lanes branch off both sides of Niederdorfstrasse, leading further into the magic of the old town. The neighborhood is just the right size, small enough so you cannot get lost or disoriented or exhausted, but large enough to keep you discovering new sites for a couple of days. You can easily fill out an afternoon by meandering through this fascinating network of alleys exploring the little shops and enjoying the 
variety of traditional Swiss buildings. Well, your main itinerary could be summarized as simply wandering up and down nearly every little lane in the old town, which is an ideal version of the best imaginable collection of historic buildings set amid a delightful tangle of narrow cobblestone pedestrian alleys. Disney could not have done it better, but this is the real thing. Leave it to the Swiss to preserve their past and maintain these 500-year-old buildings in perfect condition. Paved with cobblestones and lined with historic buildings hosting modern shops, cafes, and restaurants, Niederdorfstrasse is a place to linger and enjoy. Sometimes it widens to form small plazas as it intersects with other lanes, but mostly it is just about 20 feet across. This medieval street curves here and there and rises and drops slightly as it continues in a most pleasant pattern. It has been the main lane of Zurich since the Middle Ages and is still the major route for visitors to explore today. And the label Niederdorf applies not just to the street, but to the neighborhood in general. Niederdorfstrasse stretches for nearly one mile from the train station area to beyond the cathedral and is limited to pedestrians the entire way. Typical of European streets, it changes names a few times, becoming Munstergasse, Hirschenplatz, and Oberdorfstrasse, but it's basically the same road throughout. We have a longer, detailed movie all about Zurich's old town that you can find in our collection. And now we bring you to the modern side of the city, showing you the great boulevard, the Bahnhofstrasse, along with some of the other fine shopping lanes. We'll also go out on a lake boat ride, bring you inside the main art museum, take you on an excursion by train to the nearby town of Zug, and generally show you around. The Limat River runs through the center of Zurich, roughly dividing the city into old and new sections. For the rest of the show, we will stick with the more modern north side of the city. Bahnhofstrasse is the pride of modern Zurich and counts as the one and only boulevard of the city. It's famous for being one of the most exclusive and expensive shopping streets in the world. Here you can get anything from diamond rings to chocolate to fur coats. This is a glamorous boulevard, broad, tree-lined, and for pedestrians and trams. So you don't have any automobile or truck traffic on the Bahnhofstrasse. It's a very comfortable place to stroll about. It goes for nearly a mile from the train station down to the lake. And there are some small plazas along the way and great side streets for exploring. You can take some tram rides to get an overview of the city. It's a quick way to travel along the Bahnhofstrasse, but you can really get around by foot because the town is compact. At the south end of Bahnhofstrasse, you will run into the lake, and there's where you can buy a ticket on the dock for a boat ride on the Zurich Zee. There are several longer journeys that go further down the lake and return to Zurich, two, three, or four hours. But you'll probably find this 90-minute trip is just about ideal. It's long enough for a real experience and not too long. You might want to consider a day trip to a nearby town. And one of the closest destinations is the historic city of Zug. It has a small historic center with several remarkable buildings. We have arrived inside the old town. We're on Unter Altstadt, which is the main street of the old town. It's only a couple of blocks long. Most of the buildings we see today are at least 500 years old and beautifully preserved. Notice the split-level street here, a very impressive adaptation when you are building your city on a sloping hill. Returning to Zurich for the evening. Perhaps you are flying out of Zurich at the end of the trip, which is easy to do because the train from downtown to the airport takes just nine minutes. This makes it easy to schedule departure from your hotel, perhaps right after breakfast, with efficient timing to reach the airport. Another reason why ending the trip in Zurich makes sense. However, here's a tip. If you were landing in Zurich at the beginning of the tour, 
it would be best to skip that city at the beginning, saving it for the end, and proceed directly by train to start in Lucerne, as we just showed in the movie. It only takes one hour by train from the Zurich airport to Lucerne. And no surprise, this will be another scenic train ride. It's just easier to be staying in the city of your departure at the end of the tour so that you can precisely time your trip from the hotel back to the airport when you're leaving the country and be available for an early flight if needed. And with that final tip, we bring this show to a safe landing. You can find longer movies in our Swiss collection about each of the destinations featured here. The film you've been watching is a summary of the entire tour of Switzerland, gathered together for your convenience in one short movie, showing you how to get the most out of your visit to this wonderful country. The other movies go into more detail with many scenes not included here. Look for them in our Swiss collection. If you enjoyed the movie, please make a comment down below. It really helps us spread the word. Thank you. <laughs> Das ist nicht fertig, das ist lustig.